this is a video from section 12.1 and it's based off the lecture notes. The 3D coordinate system is represented by R3. The 2D coordinate system is represented by R2. The 1D coordinate system is represented by R. An n-dimensional coordinate system is represented by Rn, and you would primarily see n-dimensional coordinate systems in a class like linear algebra. In Calculus 3, we are primarily focused on 3D coordinate systems and 2D coordinate systems. Choose a fixed point O called the origin and three lines that are perpendicular to each other called coordinate axes. The coordinate axes are labeled the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. The three coordinate axes determine the coordinate planes, and I will talk about those coordinate planes shortly. So if you look at the drawing on the left, we have the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, and you can see that those axes run uh, perpendicular to each other, okay? The x-axis is coming out at you. The y-axis, um, you can think of it as going side to side, and the z-axis runs up and down. And if you notice, they intersect at the origin. So this point is the origin, and it's represented by 0, 0, 0. The first coordinate, that's the x-coordinate, that first zero. The second zero would be for the y-coordinate, and the third zero would be for the z-coordinate. And you can see in the past, we would primarily be focused on the plane, right? So we would have an x-axis and y-axis that would divide the plane. Well. In three space, we have an x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, and that would divide space. We live in three space. So we're using the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis to divide space. We use the x-axis and y-axis together to divide a plane. So I hope that makes sense. Imagine being in the classroom and I'm standing in front of the class. I am standing on the xy plane. The whiteboard where I write is located on the yz plane. The door at which you enter the classroom is on the xz plane. Now, the three coordinate planes divide space into eight parts called octants. So again, that's where I'm going back to this picture here. Notice how the xy plane divided the plane into four parts called quadrants. The x, y, and z axis divide space into eight parts called octants. Now, the first octant is determined by the positive axes. Okay. The graph of an equation that involves x and y is a curve in R2. The graph of an equation that involves x, y, and z is a surface in R3. So if you're in R2, you have a curve. If you're in R3, you have a surface. Let's take a look at example one. Suppose I ask you to graph the points 4, 5, 6, and negative 2, negative 2, 0. Now, to plot 4, 5, 6, I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm going to move 4 units along the x-axis. Now, I'm going to move 5 units along the y-axis. Okay? So remember, we're in 3 space, so it, notice my line is not going to go perfectly up and down. We're in three space. Okay. So now, again, I moved four units along the X, five units along the Y, and from there, 
I'm going to move six units along the Z. And so I'm going to plot roughly right there. Okay. It's a little bit different than what you, you might be used to. Okay. Because we're trying to plot in three space on a two dimensional surface. Okay. So this point here represents four, five, six. Now, suppose I want to plot negative two, negative two, zero. So I'm going to draw this dotted line here, and I'm going to go back two units along the X, right? And then I'm going to go two units to the left along the Y. And I'm not traveling anywhere along the Z, so I just stay put. And so this point here is going to represent negative two, negative two, zero. It, it's very similar to plotting points in two dimensions. You start at the origin, you move a certain amount along the X and a certain amount along the Y, right? In three dimensions, we move a certain amount along the X, a certain amount along the Y, and a certain amount along the Z. And we're still starting at the origin to plot those points. Suppose I ask you to describe in words the region of R3 represented by the equation or inequality. For example, suppose I give you y equals negative 2. Now, this represents a plane that runs parallel to the xz plane. Remember, y is fixed. x and z can take on whatever it wants, right? So I want you to kind of think about it like this. I can write this as 0x plus y plus 0z equals negative 2. So x and z can take on anything, and y is fixed. So again, this is a plane that runs parallel to the xz plane and two units behind it. x equals 10. This is a plane that runs parallel to the yz plane. Same kind of reasoning. So we could write this as x plus 0y plus 0z equals 10. Okay? So y and z can take on whatever it wants, and x is the one that stays fixed. So this is a plane that runs parallel to the yz plane and 10 units this time in front of it. That's x equal 10. Now, x equals z is a little bit more interesting, I, I think. This is a plane that, uh, perpen that runs perpendicular to the xz plane and intersects the plane in the line x equals z, y equals 0. So if you're on the xz plane, y has to be 0. Okay, that's this part. So if you just look at x equals z in that plane, you have a line, right? So remember, again, I can write this as x plus 0y equals z. So notice y can take on whatever it wants, right? But if you're looking, if you're looking at x equals z inside the, the xz plane, you have a line. And then now, let y take on whatever it wants. And so you end up getting a plane, and it intersects the plane, the xz plane specifically, in the line x equals z, y equals 0. So when you're on the plane, y equals 0. When you're not on the plane, y takes on all different kinds of values. So that would be the answer to this one. Okay, that'll conclude this video for section 12.1. And again, this is a video based off the lecture notes. Thank you.